Hi, Data Ben here. We've covered the lambda and let functions in the last couple of videos. Now I'm going to show you something really cool, and that's recursive lambdas. A recursive lambda is a lambda that calls itself. So this means that you can actually do a basic form of looping in Excel. Let's see how this works. So first we have a couple of rows of data. So we have uh, this list of five here and then a list of seven items here below. And what we want to be able to do is actually choose from these items the option that we want and get the result. So you can see here, if I put in two or three, it actually brings back via this recursive lambda that we're going to cover, it brings back the result. So option four, option five, and so on. And same with the list below, and it does this very quickly as well. You can also do additional things, such as if I say I want to choose item zero, it's instead of showing the usual Excel error message, it gives us a text result. And uh, if I choose a number that's out of bounds, so I'll say seven for this one, it will come up with a not found result rather than say a value error or an NA error that you would usually see. Let's cover the formula itself. Okay, so this is the lambda formula. So for lambdas, the first thing you do is you declare your parameters and we have four of them. We have the text that we're going to analyze, the character. Now this is the delimiter character. So the character that we want to use to separate the items out. In this case, it, it will be a carriage return because each item is on a new line. Then we have N, which is the item that we want to return. And then we have a counter as well. So this is just to say that we're going to start counting from the first item onwards and it's useful for when we're looping up via our recursive formula. Next we have the calculation itself which is actually this large if statement here. So first we have a check to see if n is 0 and if it is then we just show the error message please choose a number greater than 0. Then if we're actually n equals to the counter this means as we've been looping up we've actually hit the result that we want and we want to actually provide the text that's that's remaining here next if n doesn't equal the counter so let's say we're starting on counter one and uh, the first loop and we have the third item we're looking at the third item to get i'll change this to three so we're looking for the third item then it's going to hit this part of the formula and then here it's going to actually call itself. So the formula is going to call itself, which is how recursion works. So you actually call a function within a function any number of times until an end condition is found. So our end condition, and you must always have an end condition in mind, otherwise you may generate an infinite loop for example, which will just come up as a, as a value error in or a calc error in Excel. So our end condition is if the counter equals n. Otherwise, what we do here is we're actually replacing the text. So if we hit the first item, we actually replace that first item with blank. So we delete it and then we loop up. We add one to the counter and then we start. So when we run this, we start again from the top and then it will run through until the end condition is met. So n equals counter in this case. Let's visualize this. So you can see here, uh, this is an example using a loop up to three for the actual data that we have. So in the first pass, so we have the basic data and it will, uh, what it'll do is it'll, it'll loop through and find the first uh, carriage return and then delete everything before that, so we're left with item two, and then it will call itself and do exactly the same thing, and delete itself and call uh, where everything before the carriage return again, and then this time it will know that it's hit the third item because we've said n equals three, and the counter is now at three as well, and so what it'll do is it'll run a simple left function uh, or left formula to just bring in the data, as you can see here, up until where the next carriage return is. So it finds the carriage return here, and then it just do, does a left text 
and then find the carriage return and it outputs the result. So it doesn't need to go on further than it needs to. It doesn't need to loop up further than it does. I've done an if error here as well, because of course, if we have the last item in the loop, so if I do five here, there is no carriage return at the end. So if there's an error, because left cannot find a carriage return here, so this find will fail because it's the last item in the list, then just return the text because there's nothing else left in the list. So we can see here, if we check the boundaries, so if we do one, five, um, then we get the correct results, and zero we get the error message, and if we go out of bounds we get the not found results. So the lambda is working. So the key thing to realize here is definitely the actual recursion where it's happening. But of course while we're creating this formula we actually still get a calc error. This is because we unfortunately currently in Excel we can't test the lambda directly in the formula because the find item is not the find item formula, the find item lambda is not actually in the formula here. So we need to add it to the name manager first before it starts working. So we click on formulas and define name or name manager and we copy the lambda fully and we create find item here and we just paste in the formula itself and press OK. And that's what makes the formula be able to be called from the name manager. So if we go to cell C3 here, we can actually have already typed in the results, uh, the uh, formula that we need to call find item, which is very easy to read. And it does mean that the lambda is hidden behind the name now. So if you want to create more complex formulas like this for end users, you can do so and then just give them the name and the, the parameters that they need to fill in in order to use the function. So we have find item here. The first argument is the text. The second argument is the delimiter that we want to use. In this case, we've used character 10, which just means carriage return, but it could be anything. And then the third argument is the item, is n, the item that we want. So if I put three here, then it's the third item. And then the counter, which generally begins at one. So you can just default that to a one. Now the interesting thing to see here is we can now transform this to use a different delimiter. So if we say we want uh, spaces instead, so I'm going to put in a space here, you'll see that we're going to actually get single words. So we've actually got the third word here and then the fourth, um, and then the fourth word, the fifth word, sixth word, the seventh word, etc. So this has become quite a dynamic formula all, already. So just by changing the delimiter, I've changed the results of this lambda here. There are some downsides still that you may have seen as we went along. First is it's very difficult to test a lambda. So you can see here this lambda does work, but unfortunately we're not able to test it. Um, or should I say it's very difficult to test a recursive lambda specifically because it calls itself here uh, and this doesn't start with find item and there's no way to, to put that in and let, until it's in name manager, we can't test recursive lambdas very easily. So what you have to do is you have to test, create your lambda first, your recursive lambda first, then put it into name manager and then call it like this in order to test it. So it's a little bit fiddly to test and I am hoping that Microsoft will create a new uh, user interface or new, new uh, pop-up box for us to be able to edit lambdas in a little bit easier uh, method than we do at the moment. The second problem is that it, there's no actual pop-up on IntelliSense for lambdas yet, so you're not able to add your own prompts. So if I just provided this find item to end users, I would have to give them instructions as well, because although it pops up here in IntelliSense, when you open brackets, there's nothing. So this does need to be fixed in my opinion and there should be a way to actually add prompts to IntelliSense so that you can create maybe very complex Lambda recursive formulas in the background, but then be able to have IntelliSense prompts so your end users know how to fill these in. Otherwise, it's very difficult to remember the arguments you need to put in, and you may even have to consult Name Manager yourself when you're doing this. So those are two downsides. However, the upsides of Lambdas 
uh, it's extremely powerful. As you can see, you can run looping for the first time in Excel formulas and recursion for the first time. And this really makes Excel with this new Lambda and Let formula, Turing complete, meaning it's a, it's a complete programming language now. So there may be many new ways that you can stretch the uh, Lambda and Let functionality, and especially the recursive Lambda functionality in your own formulas. Here's one last look at the formula itself. Try it out and see if you can get it to work, and then come up with your own ideas. Good luck.